Welcome back to another demo of TestQuest 10. Today I'll be showing you a very broad overview of TestQuest 10, showing everything from object recognition to recordings and code generation. TestQuest 10 allows you to automate a large number of devices. We have support for Android, iPhone, iPad, Windows 7, XP, Windows CE, Linux, Blackberry, Symbian, and more. You really have a lot of options. TestQuest 10 works as a plug-in to Visual Studio and lets you automate your tests by recording and playing back a series of steps, or if you prefer, you can write code using any .NET language. You can use C Sharp, VB, Iron Python, whatever you prefer. Here I have opened Visual Studio and you can see our TestQuest 10 toolbar here at the top. In this drop-down you'll see all my connected devices. Here I have a pair of Android phones, an iPhone, and an XP laptop. For now I'm just going to connect to my Galaxy Nexus device. I'm going to open up my device pane. The device pane is just a preview of what I see on my actual device. It also allows me to interact directly with the device. For example, if I go to the calendar and click on it, it actually sends that tap down to the phone and opens up my calendar application. As you can see, it's got the calendar application opened right here. I'm going to close this right now and go back. If I didn't want to click on raw XY coordinates, instead I can actually click on an image or text. For example, on the calendar, I might want to click on this calendar icon. Or for Angry Birds, maybe I just want to click on the text that says Angry Birds. For that, I'm going to open the Asset Editor. The Asset Editor is where you're going to manage all of the resources for your project. For example, I have a couple resources defined here. I have a calendar asset. The calendar asset is an image search, meaning that this search will look anywhere on the screen looking for this image here. I'm going to go ahead and click the test button and you can see what happens. What this is going to do, it's going to search this entire image and look for this sub-image anywhere on the screen. As you can see, it found it with this little yellow selection here. Now what I'm going to show you next, I'm actually going to take my finger on the device. I'm going to move the calendar into the bottom of the screen. Okay, now that it's moved, I'm going to click the test button again. And again, it's going to search the entire screen looking for this calendar icon. And as you can see, it found it down here in the bottom. Another option is text recognition. For example, maybe I want to find the icon that says Angry Birds. In this case, I'm going to go to my text search, and I'm going to type the word Angry Birds. I'll click the test button, and again, it's going to read the entire image looking for the text that says Angry Birds. As you can see, it found it right here. And again, this works. If I move this anywhere else on the screen, it'll find it there as well. Once you define these assets, you can actually create a recording. I'm going to go ahead and press the calendar button. Instead of clicking on the screen though, I'm going to click on my asset. I'm going to say click. As you can see, it's looked for the calendar anywhere on the screen and click the icon down here. Now we have the calendar application open. I'm going to click on a date right here in the middle. I'm going to actually click it a second time as well, so we open the event for that day. And as we can see, the event shows up here on the screen. We don't need to do anything with this. I'm going to go ahead and press cancel. And then I'll go back to my home screen again by just typing home at the bottom and sending that down to the device. As you can see, I have my recording over here on the left. I'm going to stop the recording, and I'm going to save this as calendar test. The next thing we can do is play this back. I'll go ahead and click the play button. This is going to again find the calendar icon in any place on the screen and click on it. It's also going to click in the middle of the screen. It's going to open up the event, and it's opened up the event, and we've already canceled and pressed home. As you can see, this recording is pretty simple. But what if we wanted to add some sort of control flow around this? If we wanted to put this in a loop or add some conditionals? For that, we can actually generate code. I'm going to go back to my program.cs file. And again, you can see this is just a very blank console application. And what I can do is I can generate code for my recording. For that, I'll go back to the asset editor, open up the recording browser, right click and say generate code. Now what that just did, it just generated all the code from my recording and inserted it right into my program for me. Here we can see it as the same steps as the recording. It first connects to my Galaxy Nexus device, clicks on the calendar, issues a few clicks, and presses the home key. It's really that simple. From here I could add any control flow that I want. I can also run this using Visual Studio now. I'm going to go ahead and click build, and I'm going to go ahead and run this. Now first I'm going to open a device pane so you can actually watch this as it plays. And I'll say debug, start without debugging. This is open just a console. And this is going to go out, connect to my Galaxy Nexus device. Now that it's connected, it's going to search for the calendar icon on the screen. And as we can see, it did find it down on the right. Now it's going to issue a couple clicks to the screen to open up our event. Press the home key. And now we're back finished with our test. As you can see, it was really easy to make a simple recording, play it back, 
and generate all the code. Test Quest 10 has a lot of other cool features, but hopefully this gives you a quick overview of what we can do. Thanks for checking us out, and feel free to visit us on the web at www.bsquare.com. Thank you.